Hi everyone. On July 26th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of a saint, well, she goes way, way back, and probably most of us have never even heard of her. Her name is the virgin martyr Oriozili. Now, Oriozili was someone who had Greek pagan parents that worshipped idols. We know that much, but in terms of where she was actually from, we do not know. But we are aware of the fact that the first called apostle, Saint Andrew, is the one who converted her from paganism in the year 52 AD when he baptized her. Not long after that, she took up residence, as it were, at a church dedicated to Saint Michael the Archangel. And she began teaching daily in that church. Many people began to come to her because of her remarkable breadth of understanding of the faith, and especially for her spiritual prowess, which was increasing day by day. There were two other women who came to join her as well, and together all of them began preaching the gospel as fervently as they could. It must seem odd to us today to think of women teaching at that time because of misunderstandings of some of the things St. Paul says in his epistles, but indeed they did. And in fact, St. Oriozeli is known as one of the earliest equals to the apostles. And as it turns out, much like St. Mary Magdalene before her, who preached before the Emperor Nero, St. Oriozeli was someone who was also going to embark on that same very, very difficult road when a man named Domitian became emperor in 81 AD. Now at that point, St. Oriozeli had about 25 years of orthodoxy under her belt, and with an initial catechist like St. Andrew the First called, well, it doesn't seem like there was much to be desired there. And as she kept growing spiritually along with her two companions, well, it turned out that the devil prompted Domitian to begin persecuting Christians because things were not going well in the empire at that time. And he was convinced by other people that the best way to handle this would be to persecute the Christians who were undoubtedly the cause of all the problems of the empire. So eventually, St. Oriozeli found herself also before Domitian, as so many, many other people did. Christians at that time were deprived of their property. They were killed. He even had his own cousin killed for being, quote, an atheist, unquote, because he would not worship the pagan gods. So he came to St. Oriozeli with this same story. Why are you not worshiping these gods? This is, after all, your paternal heritage. So he must have known something about her parents. But Oriozeli was having none of it, and she was completely strong in her faith, and she gave Domitian himself a bit of a catechism in terms of who Jesus Christ is and what he had accomplished and how he had died for all of us and risen for all of us and was the only salvation to be found anywhere in the world. Well, Domitian, of course, did not want to hear any of this. And so he had St. Oriozeli stripped naked and beaten mercilessly for quite a long time. But yet those who saw her said that it seemed as if she was standing there watching someone else being beaten, that she was feeling nothing from this at all. And so finally, he stopped and questioned her again, and she was still refusing to do anything that he wanted, that she was remaining loyal to Christ. And then at that point, he had her thrown into prison. And lo and behold, he was stricken blind because of this. So the blind Domitian yet wanted to inflict yet more tortures and pains on St. Oriozeli but he found himself in a bit of a problem because he could not see and had to be led everywhere that he went. 
St. Oriazelli, however, wondering what Domitian would do and wondering if because of his condition that perhaps she might be set free, well, she did not want this. At this point in her life, she was ready to meet her Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Savior, despite the fact that Domitian had taken Lord and God as his own name, which was one of the other causes for his blindness. So she sent him a note, and she said this, You are a wretched man, but you can retain or regain your sight again, but there's only one way that you can do that. And that's if you take blood from my body after you have decapitated my head. Domitian, not feeling bad about anything and not exactly happy with St. Oriazelli at this point, did just that. In fact, not only did he have her decapitated, but he then burned all of her body so that it would not be possible for anyone there to gather up her relics. And because of this, many of the Greek pagans at the time who were witnessing all of these things converted to the faith of our Lord because they could not believe that the emperor was doing this. He did take the blood and he did anoint his eyes and true to the words of St. Oriazelli, he regained his sight. But things did not end up well for Domitian because we know that in the year 96, after a reign of about 15 years, he was also killed in a conspiracy that also involved his wife, Domitia. St. Oriazelli, on the other hand, was put into a church near the church of the great martyr St. Anastasia and her, uh, because of that chapel dedicated to her, healings occurred there many, many, many times. Paralytics got movement back. Women who could not conceive did conceive and many, many other things. A remarkable story about a remarkable woman whom the church has deemed to be equal to the apostles and yet another one who was very, very early back to the beginnings of the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ when, in fact, the apostles were still walking the earth. We should remember her on July 26th. We should ask for her intercession and always try to keep in mind those saints that we really don't know much about yet played such an important part in the early history of Orthodox Christianity. Bye-bye.